Nice to have you back here in this new video. What I'm recording at this moment is a May 31, last day of May 2022. Because this is another milestone for the Ricoh C31. Because the Ricoh announced a brand new firmware upgrade for the C31, Remarks 2.10. So compared to the 2.0 firmware upgrade, obviously this is another major firmware upgrade. For the CETA D1. It's quite interesting for the Ricoh SATA team that they only add bug fixes in the latest release note about this firmware upgrade. But if you got quite familiar with the Ricoh SATA team, once they have up leveled the firmware on number from 2.0 to 2.10, this must have been a huge firmware upgrade for the Ricoh SATA. Obviously, the SATA team doesn't want to let you know any further information on this firmware upgrade. But from my personal perspective, this is one of the most advanced, it's one of the best firmware upgrades for the Ricoh C31, even after three years upon its initial launch. So coming next in this video, we're going to dive very deep into the firmware upgrade. We're going to tear it down to share with you what has been added in the firmware upgrade and what on earth are the bug fixes in the release note. This firmware is going to revolutionize the C31 once again in the coming near future. Now, let's get started. Okay, first thing first, let's talk about the first, and I think one of the best killer feature that just been added on the Ricoh C31 after the 2.10 firmware upgrade. That is the auto bracket shooting. This auto bracket shooting finally arrives at the Ricoh C31. This is gonna make this dual one edge sensor much more powerful in virtual tour use cases. Everything was set automatically for you, but they also utilize the burst capture API. So bracket shooting with C31 gonna be lightning, lightning fast. This is an exciting new feature for the C31 because yeah, <laughs> it, it just pushed the boundary of the C31 once again. For this firmware upgrade, the only thing we can rely on is to use the IBL's HDR burst shooter or with the dual fission and raw plugin developed by Yoshi Hirota. But now Rico finally jams this killer feature into the official app, the official firmware upgrade. This will definitely yeah, elevate the C31 to the next level. But the one thing I have to notice is that this auto bracket shooting feature is not available on the Rico C app. This is probably why the C developers only add bug fixes in the release note, because we have to wait for the next version, next edition of the Ricoh Sita app that finally Atom user interface for the Sita Z1 finally deliver the auto bracket shooting mode to our customers. So stay tuned for the next update on the Sita app. I think you will definitely figure out something that is exciting for the Sita Z1. When the state engineer fix some bugs in their firmware, you know, the Rico has their third-party developer ecosystem. All the third-party plugins will also nourish a lot of great updates from the firmware as well. Just want to give you a sneak peek about the future of the dual fish and raw plugin developed by Yoshi Hirota, the, I think one of the best third-party developer in the uh, SETA ecosystem. Uh, the dual fish and raw plugin gonna get two exciting new features after this firmware upgrade because the seed engineer finally solved some long-term issues in their firmware and finally unlock and make the seed Z1 more juicy for the seed for the third-party developers. So one of the one of the best features for the dual fish eye raw is that the maximum exposure time for this plugin gonna be uh, 60, 60 seconds before this firmware upgrade the maximum export time for the dual fish eye raw is only half second. This is gonna make the dual fish eye raw deliver much better imaging quality, especially in low light situation. We are all waiting for the remote control app for the, you know, for the dual fish eye raw plugin. Uh, even if it is a paid software on Android, iOS, we are all waiting for the remote controller app. And with the latest firmware 2.10, finally, it is possible to develop a remote control app for the dual fish eye plugin. This is just insane. I think I will be the first paid user for the Ricoh Sita dual fish eye raw remote control app. So what about you? 
who won't be the second paid users, please leave, leave down in the comments and let me know. But obviously the theater guys, they are quite, you know, they're quite silent. They don't want to tell you too much about the firmware upgrade. From the perspective of the engineer, this is just a bug fixes. But for our CD1, especially hardcore users like Yu Jingguo, uh, this remarks, this is actually so important for me. Because the CD1 is coming even closer to the CD2 actually, because the CD1 keep get better and better. Sometimes I think there's just no need for the recall to release the CD2. It, it, it maybe in, in the future. I still want to share with you some exciting new update for the C31, especially for some official plugin and some third-party plugins. The Ricoh just announced an official HDRI plugin that will enable to capture EXR format it straight out from the camera with the help of HDRI plugin. So definitely go and check out this plugin if you are concentrated on the CGI industry. Just gonna revolutionize the way how the CGI industry works because the C31 is even more capable <laughs> in this CGI industry. And definitely check out more detail about the HDR plugin because you have a lot of different choices upon this HDR plugin. But one thing I have to share with you that this HDR plugin doesn't utilize the burst capture API. So I suppose in the future update for this official plugin, Rico could finally bring back the burst capture API to HDRI rendering the technique. So this is gonna make this EXR format even more practical in the CGI industry. You have so many more options. You can save JPEG or JPEG plus DNG, and you can also save the EXR format. So it's gonna take this data, gonna take out a lot of space in your status. So better capture HDR image with the 51 gigabyte version of the CD1. The data is just overwhelming. So 19 gigabyte internal storage is just not enough if you're a heavy duty user for the HDR EXR format. Another great update for the CD1 is that if you take a closer look at the plugin store of the Ricoh Theta, uh, you can also see some new third party plugins for the C31, such as this online meeting plugin for the C31. Figure out on your own whether you can use the C31, the dual one-inch sensor, the C31 cameras as an online 360 camera for your meeting. So you can work at home and get connected with your, with your relatives, get connected with your colleagues with a 360 camera, such as the C31 or the C31 V as well. Uh, as far as I know, this is what I can share with you from my personal perspective. But if you are a, a guy working in the Rico, or if you are experienced third-party uh, developers, uh, please leave down in the comments and add even more missing feature that in this video. Because every time, you know, every time Rico C to Z1 receive a firmware upgrade, this is quite exciting for me, personally speaking. And I love to share what all I have learned from this Rico C31, and I definitely want to help Rico C31 keep getting better and better and get close to the customers and help to push the boundary of our 360 industry to the next level. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to sum up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Finally, just give a sum up for the C31 and stay safe. See you next time. Bye.